Please be seated as I pray. Father, you gave us a Savior. You gave us a Savior who not only is capable of holding his own sheep fast, but he desires to hold his sheep fast. His sheep truly are his delight. I pray today, as we examine that Savior closely, you would allow us to see him for who he is, so that we could remember him, how he needs to be remembered. Jesus, you are the Savior. We pray this in your name. Amen. Have you ever wondered about the requirements that God has for the Savior? The requirements that God has for the sacrifice, the substitute that serves in place of the sinner? God helps us see that clearly in Hebrews chapter 7. So if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to Hebrews chapter 7? We're going to be looking at verses 26 through 28 today. This is a passage in which God declares clearly what needs to be true about the one who saves. The theme of Hebrews is that Jesus is supreme, and Jesus has supremacy over all things. Jesus has supremacy over the prophets. He has supremacy over the law. He has supremacy over the Levite priests. Here in chapter 7, the author is helping the reader understand just exactly how it is that Jesus has supremacy over all of those things, in particular the priests. We're going to be reading verses 26 through 28, and as we read verse 26... Take note of the character of Jesus. In verse 27, we see the implications of that character. And in verse 28, we see the identity of the Savior. So let's read together. For it was fitting for us to have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens, who does not need daily like those high priests to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins, then for the sins of the people, because he did this once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men as high priests who are weak, but the word of the oath which came after the law appoints a son made perfect forever. See the character of Jesus explained in verse 26. But we see first and foremost the word fitting. That means that God has a standard, God has a requirement God has a set standard that the substitute must meet. And then he explains exactly what that is. He must be holy, which means he must be separate from sin. He must be innocent, which means he commits no sin. He must be undefiled, which means that he's not polluted by the sin that one would commit. And it says that all of those things, he is to be separated, separated from sinners. He is to be one of them and represent them, but in a way he's to be separated from them. And at the end of the verse, we see how that is, and that is that he is exalted above them. Earlier in this letter, the author says that Jesus, the high Savior, the high priest, passed through the heavens and sits at the right hand of God. That is how we can see the distinction between Jesus and those that he substituted himself for. But in verse 27, we see more about this. We see the implications of what that holy character means. The author tells us a little bit more about the, the high priests in the Old Testament, the Levites, who actually did offer sacrifices. And we see that they had to do so daily. We see that their, their sacrifices were very different than from the sacrifice of the Savior. They would offer these sacrifices again and again and again. But notice how they would do this. They would do this first by offering a sacrifice for themselves. They had to offer a sacrifice for themselves because God required that the sacrifice itself be sinless and be holy. And then they had to offer sacrifice on behalf of all the people. But we see the distinction between the priests, and we see Jesus and how he is so different from them at the end of the verse. And that is that he offered the sacrifice once and for all. And the reason why he only had to offer the sacrifice once was because the, the sacrifice that he offered up was he himself. He didn't offer up an animal. He didn't offer up anything else. He offered up his very own self with his own blood. And at the end of the verse, at the end of this passage, at the end of this chapter, we see exactly who it is, the identity of Jesus. We read that the word of the oath which God gave after the law appoints a son made perfect forever. 
something very unique and very specific about Jesus, and that he was the Son of God. And the word Son here points to the exact issue, the exact identity of God himself, made perfect forever. That's the way we want to remember Jesus this morning, the Son of God, who is holy, separate from sin, innocent, undefiled, and able and capable to serve in the place of sinners. So if you're here this morning and you have put your trust and your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord, we invite you to join us in taking the elements today. And as you do, sit and ponder and remember all of the character attributes of Jesus in verse 26. And then remember yourself this week. Remember how it is that Jesus is supreme in relation to us. And when you've done that, you can prepare your hearts and you can take the elements on your own when you're ready. If you're here this morning and you are not a follower of Jesus Christ, I want to ask you one question. That question is, what kind of savior, what kind of sacrifice, what kind of substitute do you have? God has a system of justice, and in his justice, he demands and he requires a perfect sacrifice. And there is one and only one of those. That sacrifice is Jesus. As the elements come to you this morning, we want you to know that we are very glad you're here this morning. We're glad you get to sit here and participate with us and worship with us. We want you to know that this is a time for believers who understand Jesus to be the man that this passage describes. Simply take the elements and pass them by to the person next to you. Have a wonderful opportunity after the service to talk with me or any one of the other elders about the nature of that Savior, the nature of that sacrifice. We would love to do that for you. So the men will come and serve us and take the elements on your own when your heart is prepared.